owners and uh, I think most importantly, uh, many business uh, owners from Bracebridge, uh, as well as uh, representatives from the tourism <coughs> industry that are here. So it's going to be a really uh, informative day. I had an opportunity just to chat with Roger for a couple of minutes uh, beforehand, and I know he's got a great schedule planned, uh, and I think uh, we're uh, very fortunate to have a program like this today in Bracebridge, and I want to recognize the hard work that Cheryl Kelly and our Economic Development Department have done for this project and uh, for all the things that they do to uh, enhance the uh, business and tourism side of Bracebridge. Anyways, that's enough for me. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Roger now and uh, welcome him to Bracebridge, and thanks for coming with your team. Oh, sorry, we do have an intro for Roger. And I apologize, I didn't know this was here. It just fell into my hand. <laughs> Ralph Waldo Emerson said, nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. And Roger Brooks lives by this motto. One of North America's most sought after experts in the creation of great destinations, Roger has worked with nearly 1,000 communities, successfully guiding them in their community branding, revitalization, and marketing efforts. Co-author of Your Town, A Destination, The 25 Immutable Rules of success, Successful Tourism, Roger provides communities with a summary of his experiences. His book is now in its third printing. Roger's well known for energizing communities into action, providing ideas they can implement today to make a difference for tomorrow. Here to share his enthusiasm with us, please welcome Roger Brooks. Thank you. shopping you as a town. So when we do this assessment, there's two parts to it. One is marketing, and we did look at websites, we looked at brochures, we got quite a pile of brochures, um, visibility, were we able to find information. We talked about its effectiveness, was it good enough to close the sale? If we're coming from Toronto, was your marketing materials, were they good enough to get us to come to Bracebridge in Muskoka? And so we also looked at how do you compete? with Ravenhurst, with Huntsville, with, I mean, we just got done working on a huge project in Barrie, you know, get Aurelia, or any of these. And then, was it easy to get information? And then, once we did that, we on-site assessment, this is what we've been doing since Monday morning. And we have looked at your signage, your gateways, your wayfinding, was it easy for us to find stuff? And by the way, we found, I think, two or three of your 23 or whatever waterfalls. And so we're going to talk about that. Overall appeal, what was our first impression when we drove into downtown or in the area? Critical mass, like businesses grouped together. We'll talk about that. And then parking, restrooms, information. You're going to hear us talk about all of these things. And then things to see and do. Are you worth the drive, a couple hour drive from Toronto? And then customer service cross-selling, how well do you cross-sell? Um, to other people, and, and uh, when we go to one merchant, do they refer to other merchants, things like that. We actually go through 60 different items, and don't panic, I'm not going to go through all 60 of them. I think we're going to do about 10. And when we're done, we're going to go back to the office, and we're going to get you one of these kind of reports. We call it Assessment Findings and Suggestions Report. It'll have a ton of photographs in it, so you don't need to take notes like crazy, just sit back and enjoy. And by the way, there is no recommendations here. Because we came in and we said, don't tell us anything about Grace Bridge except where we're going to meet this morning. So this is totally secret shop. We came in just like any visitor. We got no preconceived notions or, oh, while you're here, you need to do this and this and this. We're coming up like anybody else would. And we have not been in Grace Bridge before. I have to tell you that I've spoken at Deerhurst probably three or four times for different conferences. And of course, we just cruised right through the area and went straight to Huntsville. And so it was fun this time to actually see it. And by the way, you know, you go to Huntsville, they do most of their conferences in the winter. So it was nice to actually come here when there's still leaves on the tree and everything. So this is meant to be a conversation starter, not all the answers. So that's why I said they're suggestions, not recommendations. A bit a little presumptuous of us to come in and say, we recommend you do this and this one. We never talk to you first. And so that's important. And this is not just about tourism. But you know what? It is the front door to your non-tourism economic development efforts. Anybody who would come up here to establish a business, 
to develop uh, any kind of industry or anything is going to come here first as what? A visitor. This is the place I want to live, my employees would want to live. Can I make money here? And that's what we're going to talk about. And our focus for this is about bread. So here's what we're going to do this morning. I thought I'd put up a little agenda there. We'll go till roughly 9.30. I'll try not to slip over that too much. Then we'll take a break. And then I'm going to tell you, here's what we saw of Brace Bridge. No holds barred. How many of you are nervous already? Yeah. So, and so we're going to talk about it. We looked at businesses. We, so you'll see some things. And then we'll do a little bit of Q&A at the end and answer any questions. Well, did you see this? Did you see that? By the way, we took a couple hundred pictures. You're not going to see them all. I've had many times I have people say, well, I have a business there. You didn't show my business. And, and uh, it's, we might have taken pictures of it, but we're trying to show uh, kind of illustrative things. And so the first thing we're going to talk about is the art of branding a community. And so I'm going to tell you what that means and what it is. And there are two kinds of brands. One is the feel-good brand that says, come to Grace Bridge. We have something for everyone. By the way, have you ever gone anywhere that had something for everyone? No. And so then there's the economic development brand, and that's what we're going to talk about. The goal of this branding effort is to find out what can we do to import more cash into Grace Bridge, particularly from Labor Day till, till next what? May? That's six months. And so we're going to talk about a lot about that. The whole idea is to import more cash than you export. That is called balance of trade. So if you live in Bracebridge, and heaven forbid you ever go down to the Georgian Mall in Barrie, or to Toronto, or over to Perry Sound or anywhere else, that's called leakage. And the communities that win import more cash than they leak out. And so that's what this is about. So to start things off, we're in the midst of the biggest shift in North American history. And there's four main ingredients that have led to this. And the very first one is that communities are looking for their second act. Across Canada, there are 12,000 cities, towns, townships, counties, and districts. 12,000. And nearly every single one of them was founded on either transportation, oh, we're close to a major freeway, we're close to a major rail line, we're close to a major waterway, or, we're, or they were founded on a natural resource, whether it's timber, whether it's fishing, whether it's mining, agriculture, or whether it's manufacturing, which is kind of a combination of natural resources and transportation. But here's the problem. The Industrial Revolution is over, period. It's over. There's still industry, and we're really grateful for it, but that revolution is over. Head down to Detroit, you'll see. And so, we are now in a global economy, and the world's at our fingertips in seconds with this. And so, every year across Canada, hundreds of communities are saying, what do we do next? And we've heard it all up and down the Great Bruce Peninsula where we've worked. We were just over in Kenora. Do you know where that is? Most people say, that's in Ontario. They're closer to Winnipeg than they are to you by quite a ways. And so they're all trying to diversify. So that's the first ingredient of change. Number two, the demographic is changing big time. And here's the scoop. The baby boom. Okay, I want to know. How many of you were born between 1946 and 1964? Raise your hand. Okay, about a third of us. How many of you were born in that period and you didn't raise your hand because you don't like being called a baby boomer? <laughs> okay. Well, let me talk about this group for a minute. First of all, they account for 80% of all travel spending. That's 8 out of $10. You see them. Isn't this your cottagers? See, that's a new term we picked up the first day we were here. But here's the scoop about this, this group. There are 400,000 people, this is in the U.S. and Canada, turning 50 every month. That means every two and a half months, there's another million 50-year-olds out there. Is that scary or what? Yes. And what's even scarier, it's going to continue for a four, another four years. And that's just until they turn 50. 
It's going to be another 15 years after that until they turn 65. So this is no flash in the pan. This is going to be here for decades. The oldest ones are 65 this year. And so they control 70% of North America as well. So how many of you just raise your hand? And right now you're thinking, wait a second, where's my fair share? Yeah. And the mind says individuality, emphasis on youth, self-absorption. Okay, it's the B generation. And look at this. They'll pay more for quality. The top 15% of accommodations in terms of quality come in 85% of the business with this group of leisure travelers. So I have to tell you that when we came up here on Monday night, we stayed in Huntsville. Because when we looked on the web for good accommodations, I travel about 250 days a year. And so, you know, I, I really didn't want the 1950s, 60s, early 70s mom and pa hotels, and we really couldn't find much of quality on the web in Bracebridge. And so we stayed at the Holiday Inn Express up there. But then when we came down, or that was on, uh, yeah, Monday. So, but then when we started looking around, all of a sudden we ran into some other nice places. We saw Taboo, we ran into, uh, uh, where did we stay in? What's that? Touchstone. Touchstone. And that's, by the way, that's where we've been staying. Because we wanted to stay here. But you know why we couldn't find them? Because they're under fractionals and under resorts, and we were looking for hotel rooms. See what I mean? But for the most part, we thought, boy, I don't know. It looks kind of rough finding quality accommodations. So I have to tell you, that was our first impression. So this group. They're in their peak earning years right now. They're becoming empty nesters. Those old, the oldest ones are empty nesters. And they will inherit $8.5 trillion from their parents who are the best savers in North American history. The baby boomers, dead last. <laughs> Myself included. And they are the me generation, and they are about connecting with the environment, with each other, with their roots. And so... The baby boomers measure, there's a typical baby boomer right there. Did I get that about right? <laughs> and this is the measure. Okay, boomers, I want to hear it from you if you agree, okay? You ready? Here we go. We may be aging, but we are not growing old. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty weak. Yeah. 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 You know, just to illustrate the power of the baby boomers, Harley Davidson is now in panic mode. And because the average age of a person buying a Harley Davidson is 49 years old. You know, the young people aren't on a Harleys, they're on those crotch rockets. You know what I'm talking about, the Kawasaki's, Yamaha's, and Suzuki's, the low slung motorcycles. Their parents are on the Harley Davidson. So Harley Davidson is really worried that when these boomers get off their motorcycles, what's going to happen to Harley Davidson? Because the younger generation aren't on, aren't on those bikes. So they spent millions of dollars, and they came up with the V-Rod. This is all horsepower on two wheels. It is the meanest, biggest, baddest Harley ever made. Notice it's got the low slung handlebars and everything. This is going to be the Harley Davidson that's finally going to cross the generational divide down to the baby boomers. So there it is in silver and black. There it is in orange and black. And you know what? The average age of a person buying a V-Rod it's 51! <laughs> the boomers will not grow old. So I'm going to show you a little video here that pretty much sums up the boomers. <laughs> 